You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You've joined the Dean Team. It's Wednesday night. Um, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, subhanAllah, I've got uh, obviously my beautiful brother Muhammad Hablas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Mazin? And assalamu alaikum to all the brothers and sisters who've tuned in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward one and all, inshallah. Amen. Um, and uh, a very, very special guest. None other he's other. not our guest. He's this guy's one of us. Look, he's man. one what of us. Mean? But but I have to say tonight he's actually um, even more than just a special guest, um, and he's a. Uh, well, I won't get into too much detail just yet, and I'll let him explain it. But Mr. Malaz Majani, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Mazin. You're such a humble brother, like you're, you're blushing. Oh, sorry, that's the red light in the studio. Sorry. Jazakallah <laughs> khair, Mazin. Thank you, thank you for having me as a guest and as a very special, special um, something, something. <laughs> yeah, very, very special guest, Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair, Akhi. You, you um, look, uh, you look very exhausted, uh, Abu. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, as, as you. Are aware that um, we've been working on this um, new initiative for the Muslim community, community Alhamdulillah, One Path Network, um, and this is really something that um, we've been working very, very hard on. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, something that um, that's quite a necessity for us um, in the community, Inshallah. Um, is it fair to ask uh, Abu Ahmad what is One Path Network? Oh, you're getting straight into it. I so mean, <laughs> let's just uh, let's not beat around the bush. Yeah. So, um, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we we have the radio station, we have um, our references. Alhamdulillah. Um, but uh, as a Muslim community in Australia, we need to sort of um, move with the times. We need to have um, you know ac- accessible sort of um, mediums of of da'wah that can sort of reach people, regardless whether they're on their phone or in their home or at work. Um, and regardless of the devices that they're using as well. So alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're starting a, a new media outlet, an Islamic media outlet that is um, exclusively run and owned by, by Muslims. And uh, this will give the Muslims, inshallah, a voice um, in, in, on media. It will allow the Muslims to, to sort of produce programs and produce productions that can sort of benefit, um, you know, Youth can benefit the um, and, and you know the majority of, of people in the community, inshallah. Well, I mean, yeah, this, I have to say, obviously, I mean, it's something that's sorely needed. Um, obviously, the media is something where we are um, underrepresented in in a good way, like as in from the good angle, we're we're overrepresented uh, in terms of all the you know biased uh, media coverage. But but um, in terms of insightful, educational, um, beneficial knowledge. Um, you know, and TV content definitely it's it's non-existent as far as we're concerned here in Sydney, um, or in Australia for that matter. Um, tell us a bit more about the actual, you know, what what's as the normal average person out there in Sydney or you know in in Melbourne or wherever else in Australia, and even this has the potential to go worldwide. There's nothing to stop it from going worldwide, all right? Absolutely. How how does that sort of how do they potentially access this for instance sure so with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're starting so we've built a studio so we have a very large studio a fully fledged TV studio it's fully not fledged like some backyard channel 7 channel 9 grade in terms of um, uh, space so it's more than 170 square meters which is quite large for uh, for television studios so we have enough space for a live audience alhamdulillah and we've purchased all the equipment that are required to, to do productions um, high quality productions all the cameras all the lighting all the switches um, you know all the equipment that's actually required to operate and, and, and produce content. And once we have this content produced, what we could do is we can um, provide uh, this content uh, using several different access mediums, what, they call, what we call them. So one of them could be an app for the phone, an app for the iPad, a, a set-top box that can connect to the computer, um, a website that allows you to do streaming and video on demand as well. Um, and we're also looking at doing applications for smart TVs that connect to the internet. Yep. Um, so it, it's really initially based as an IP model, and then with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
we will try and look for things like a Foxtel license. We will try and give content to uh, free-to-air broadcasters such as TVS uh, and even have some sort of working arrangement with other broadcasters around the world so that our content that's produced locally in Australia can reach as many people as possible around the world. Yeah. And we will focus on the English language. So the idea is that we focus on the English language because and, and focus on, on local issues as well. So one of the things that we've, we've realized is that we have a lack of... Um, we have a lack of, you know, Islamic scholars addressing Islamic issues for people that are relevant in the West. So issues that are relevant to the people in the West. So with all due respect to the Mashaykh in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia, because they're not living in the West, they have a completely different context. Yes, yeah. they're and not in touch with the issues that we're facing here. Absolutely, and, yeah. and, and one of the, the problems that we, we have as a community in Australia, or in the West for, for that matter, is that you have an Arabic-speaking Sheikh trying to trying to explain uh, you know uh, an issue or, or you know about, about something that's um, happening in a in a place that's very far from them so what we're trying to do is get some some scholars some of the local mashaykh that we know and trust um, that speak uh, the that have grown up in Australia that have uh, the, the 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 foundational and the credible authentic teachings of Islam and try and address this in a language that people understand in the English language without any translations without you know being misrepresented or misinterpreted or things like that and uh, this is a very important uh, you know program or, or initiative for us as muslims as as a muslim community at large because we really need to start thinking differently i mean as a as a muslim community we need to start thinking about the future how we can actually reach the majority of the people how we can actually um, you know engage the youth that only speak english they don't speak arabic they want to know about their deen, but they don't speak the language. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. They should learn the Arabic, but we want but to engage them. The reality exactly. is that they are sort of, you know, they don't have the, the Arabic fundamentals. They don't have the... I think uh, I, I think also this this argument of, oh, yeah, but they need to learn Arabic, I think that's just... Uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's run out of steam, though, but really, it's right. because... They need to learn Arabic, but it's not, they're not mutually exclusive. Right. You don't have to learn Arabic in order to learn but, your deen. But the reality is, is now we are dealing with millions and millions and millions of English-speaking Muslims. Correct. Fully English-speaking. Um, you know, we are speaking about Arabs who are now their children, right, have lost their language altogether. Yeah. How... What about these, you know, hundreds and thousands on a yearly basis who are reverting back to Islam, exactly. who, who, you know, who come, well, that, who come from yeah. a, you know, look, what, one of one of the questions that I would like to ask Abu Ahmed is that, you know, look, the first thing that comes to mind um, when I think media and you know, media and productions is I think, oh, okay, is this videos like, are we talking about recording the local, the, you know, I mean, is this about recording the weekly talk in the local masjid and then just posting it up on YouTube um, because I remember that that was the initial thought that came to my mind. I'm thinking about, hang on, uh, there are m millions of talks on YouTube that, you know, you can you can sort of jump on and, and, and um, is this, I mean, is this what we're, we're talking or, or, or are we talking completely different scope here? We are actually talking completely different scope. We're, we're not um, only a YouTube channel. So we will have a YouTube channel and we have that up and running already because YouTube is an excellent platform that's accessible to everyone. But what we're trying to do is have something that is actually interactive. So something like a TV show, a variety show from an Islamic context, something that is produced at a very high quality that uh, people, you know, that the youth have grown up and sort of are used to. So the quality is very important in terms of lighting, in terms of sound, in terms of production, in terms of creativity, in terms of engaging people. Visual, editing, visual animations, um, infographics, all, all these sort of, you know, latest sort of technologies that are being used by, by you know, non-Muslim, uh, non by the, by the main, mainstream media. And, and we need to have an alternative an alternative that I, as a father, can can sort of allow my or, or you know feel comfortable having my son sort yeah. of watch this without sort of falling into sin, or without sort of you know corrupting the fitrah, or without sort of being exposed to things like um, you know things that that we know are wrong in Islam, yeah. but bec they become normalised on, on on mainstream media. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is we try we're not trying to compete with mainstream media either because um, of course they are they have much greater budgets and they've been doing it for such a longer time. But we are trying to provide an alternative for the Muslim community, yeah. something that is locally produced. At the moment, we have no local productions whatsoever, other than you know the, the lecture here yeah, and the there DVDs that's posted up on on the yeah, exactly on, on on the internet and you know sold on on DVDs or handed out as DVDs. What we're trying to do is actually have something interactive. 
So imagine like an Islamic debate. And imagine like a variety TV show. Or imagine like having uh, you know, one of the scholars that you know and trust and, and, and sort of more than one scholar. And you, and you sit them down on a panel and ask them some, you know, some questions about local issues. I mean, for relevant, example... Things that relevant, are relevant to us a, and that we face every day. Absolutely. And I mean, just as an example, we all know about the story that, you know, that uh, sort of was blasted all over the media recently in regards to a man, a Muslim man who married a 12-year-old. A lot of Muslims don't even understand or know the rulings on this. Is it allowed? Is it not allowed? Is it halal? Is it haram? Is it sunnah? Is it not sunnah? I mean, people are confused. Muslims are confused themselves. So with this platform, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll be able to clarify these things and give people a proper understanding and, and use the credible and authentic teachings of Islam to deliver something that people can, can actually appreciate and understand and benefit from. Yeah. You know, I really like the point you made, Malaz, about um, you know, giving our families something that is an alternative. Because it's easy to say, don't do this and don't do that. Don't watch TV. You know, it's easy to be the, the haram police and take everything away, right? Correct. And as a parent, it's actually the, it is the easiest thing to do. But the problem is, to you, got, you, you, can't, exactly, you can't take something away and then not give an alternative because they, they need that outlet somewhere, right? So, so by giving this alternative, you've actually now solved the problem by saying, okay, I don't want you to watch this but I'm more than happy for you to watch this because you are comfortable with the content uh, and, you know, and with how it all works. So uh, Absolutely. So Look, my, my, my two-year-old grabs my phone. He knows how to unlock it and he knows how to slide through photos, absolutely. pick apps, <laughs> and he'll go to the iPad. My child knows how to unlock my phone, get onto YouTube and actually put in keywords for Thomas the Tank Engine and for yeah really really honestly it's exactly it's so so this is what we're trying and to provide just, just for the audience that that means they know much more than Hoblos himself knows about this <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah this is really about providing I mean the Muslims of Australia and the Muslims in the West you know alternative content that they can trust yes. that's credible that's authentic that can actually be beneficial that doesn't corrupt the fitrah that doesn't sort of you know ruin that natural disposition that, that children have so we, we, we have plans with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have children's shows something for children we have plans to have youth talks we have plans to have community programs um, current affair programs even news programs we can have panel programs tafsir programs tajweed programs um, I mean women's I programs see a trivia show Real stories, look, even trivia shows, even Islamic game shows, um, we can even have, I mean, we have enough space within the studio to actually bring Muslim s students or kids yeah. from Islamic schools and let them compete against each other in, in Islamically, con you know, with an isla Islamic context, Islamic yes. questions, something that's relevant to them that they can benefit from. Um, we, we have even plans, I mean, we can even do cooking shows, Mazen. I mean, the, 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 really the sky is the limit with what we can do. Educational shows, you we, know, we can gonna have... You know, there's going to be a huge demand in having the Dean team have a segment on that, on that TV in channel. You inshallah, know that, right? so. inshallah. Look, the, the whole concept, I mean, this is all uh, comes back down to one point. It's a Dawah initiative. Yes. So anything that actually benefits the community, we will have, inshallah. Anything, inshallah. as long as it's at the high quality, at the professional sort of grade that we are sort of aiming at, um, then this is really a Dawah initiative for everyone. Um, it's something for the for the um, entire community as well, so it's not something limited to a particular group or a particular well, mosque. To, to the point we spoke about earlier, it's not just about, you know, oh, we should know how to speak Arabic and hence, you know, yes, this is a good alternative. No, I mean, realistically, I think, what, 20% of all Muslims, you know, population are Arabic speaking in the first place, right? So you've got Indonesia, Malaysia, um, you know, the African countries and, you know, the Asian countries don't necessarily speak Arabic as their natural tongue, right? Obviously for Quran and things like that, they have to. But um, so it's not just about giving something to, to an Arab audience or non, you know, this is all inclusive, Absolutely. So really the, the Muslim community in Australia and in the West is quite diverse in terms yes. of nationalities and, and language that's spoken. But what sort of combines them in the West is the English language and La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So we're trying to really ad, you know, address that particular segment in the market, um, you know, provide something meaningful, um, you know, really something professional. Um, uh, you know, and, and we, can, we would like to be seen as a credible and authentic media outlet yeah. as well. So what we're doing is we're taking a very impartial approach. So we are a media outlet and we welcome everyone um, onto our channel. We have the, um, the, the, the slogan, in fact, for, for the channel at the moment is everyone's invited because we are really opening arms to everyone within the community to be sort of part of this amazing initiative, um, you know, because we, we understand and we realize how beneficial and how important this is for the community yes. and how detrimental it would be 
if if we don't have such an initiative, um, you know, in in this. Um, in, in, in the community, something yeah. for us as an alternative, something that can sort of, you know, build that spiritual connection with Islam. Yeah. Over the television, yes, we can watch television. There's nothing, no one's saying that television is well, haram. Well, any, medi any medium for that matter is not in itself haram. It depends what it's used for. Right? Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's subhanAllah, it's just like a rose. I mean, a rose is beautiful to look at. It has beautiful fragrance, but it's got thorns. So you need to avoid the thorns and yeah. just benefit from where you can benefit. Exactly. And, and this is really the, the idea that we're trying to do. We, we, we are setting up with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a, a religious advisory panel. So several of the mashayikh that we um, that we know within the city that are very well, very well known, very well respected, and they'll be able to give us some guidelines in terms of the the way that we we structure and the way we run the the religious sort of component of of the shows inshallah and that's another very big bonus because you're talking about scholars and mashayikh that are already um part of the community and already being relied upon by the people in our community so it's not as if we're taking someone from outside that has no um no relevant knowledge of the context of australian society or, or you know the australian customs or or any experience with australia whatsoever you actually i mean i presume you will get guests you know Absolutely. overseas but the main the, the core of it the ones that will be advising are people that are already very active in the community themselves Absolutely, and this is, I mean, this is, um, subhanAllah, it's, it's something of, of great importance. And the other thing that we're doing, um, Mezin, is we, we're structuring uh, what we're calling a management board. So we're separating the religious advisory board from the management board. Um, and the other to run the actual to run so the day-to-day -the -day operations, yes, the yeah. the managerial sort of duties and administration of, of this uh, because it's it's quite a large it's a very involved organization it's not something to take highly involved absolutely so we have a dedicated management board that will run this particular organization inshallah um, one path network of course and we're also bringing together at the moment a female a sister committee. And this sister committee will allow us to, to tap into, of course, uh, the, 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 the female, female segment, audience, the yeah. female audience, and they'll be able to give us some ideas, they'll be able to make their productions, they'll be able to give us feedback, and they'll be able to, to, to provide you know, the female touch, as they say, to, to programs and to even to kids' programs. And we're working on that at the moment, inshallah, so that we can have a very large appeal and, and uh, have you know, the entire Muslim community sort of you know, be behind this particular project, inshallah. SubhanAllah. Um, I want to ask you a question, Malaz, now... Uh, I've actually, um, my father is the one that introduced internet TV to me. I didn't even know what it was. To me, TV is just you turn on the TV or you got Fox or whatever it is. And, um, you know, that's to me the main form of TV. But the actual fact is it's actually um, a huge um, shift in how people use the medium of TV and, and how they hook things up to TV. So you can, you've got this thing that Apple sells, which is the Apple TV, right? So you download an app or whatever it is that you can watch. TV through this little device. It's like 60 bucks, I think you can buy it. Um, you can buy an Android box. You can buy all these different things. Um, and you can download content over, you know, smart TVs and things like that. So the TV that we're used to, like Channel 7, 9, 10, this is a thing of of the past. Absolutely. Look, um, uh, alhamdulillah, we've done a lot of research in terms of the way that the industry is trending. And you find that people like Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, ABC, SBS are all moving into what they call the online model yes. or the video on demand model yes. where people want to watch the news when they're free, not wait until 6 p.m. to watch the That's news. That's the old model. <laughs> Absolutely. And you find, I mean, the industry is, is changing rapidly with the increase of technology and the internet and the availability of devices and smartphones. Smartphones and tablets and yeah, all these so, kinds so of things. So you find, yeah. I mean, you find in America, there's an organization by, it's called Netflix, it, uh, it provides, it's like one of these um, cable sort of suppliers. Yeah. I mean, when a series is released, they will now give you the full series. Yeah. So you're able to download yeah. the full series from the day it's released and you can watch it at your own pace. You don't have to wait till next week to see the next series. And I mean, imagine this happened on Bubble Hada, what will happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they have, you, the they have you hooked for about 14 months, I think, you know, to watch this stuff. Absolutely. So, so there is a, a very, um, you know, very clear change in the yes. way that people are consuming content. It's consumer-based. It's consumer-based. It's, consumer -based. it's, consumer it's, it's what well, consumers. Well, I mean, uh, really more and more we are becoming a people of now, yes. now, now. Yeah. You know, no, not really, nobody's got time to wait there. Until nine o'clock at night, yeah. or till you know whatever eight thirty or seven thirty to sit there and watch something yeah. that that is already out. Yeah, you know, but the mainstream is not going to give it well, to it's, me. It's like Malaz said, it's when you have time. You might not have time at that nine o'clock, so it's whenever you have the moment. So whenever it is you becoming have the all on demand. Absolutely. So we are looking at doing, you know, following the trends of of the industry to make sure that we are very sort of. Um, in touch with, with the technology that's being used, in touch with, with social media platforms, which are huge at the moment. I mean, people yeah. consume so many videos on the Internet, on their Facebook, on their devices, whether they're waiting for a bus, on the train, 
at work. I mean, I've seen people do this during Friday Juma khutbah. Yeah, subhanallah. subhanallah. People, uh, which is wrong, of course. Of course. But people are so attached to their but devices. But the reality is, it's out there. It's, it's being used. out there. Yeah. People are using it. And what we would like to do is give people some content that they can rely on, yeah. something they can trust. So the the idea and our vision that we have for One Path Network is that if you watch something on this particular network, you know and you can trust that the content that you are being that you are watching is is has been you know passed through the yeah. the, the credible and the, the authentic filters the filters yeah. of, of the mashayikh and the scholars so that you can actually trust it and, and you ultimately know, you know who's behind this whole thing absolutely yeah. and the, look the thing is again it's unfortunate people today they search on the internet for for islamic answers yes and anyone any joe can can post a website about islam or, or a fatwa make it look nice make and, it look and nice looks, it looks authentic exactly and yeah. people don't know what's right from wrong correct so we want to give people something credible something they can actually trust and this is one of the the visions and one of the objectives that we have that we actually give something that, that people can trust and people can sort of relate to and again i mean the the mechanism needs to be very engaging needs to be sort of very modern high quality production and we're very sort of uh, keen on making sure that all the production is at a very high quality inshallah subhanallah is there going to be any news inshallah so as you can imagine this is a very very large project extremely large in terms of organizational um, i mean we we are, we are at the moment we're trying to set up something like like al jazeera which takes huge budgets huge teams of people that sort of you know can develop this um, inshallah what we're doing is we're doing a step by step approach so we will start what's called a soft launch in this year, inshallah. So we'll start producing some pilot content this year, some pilot productions this year, and then we will grow slowly, slowly, slowly. Of course, inshallah, with in the near future, we would love to have relevant news, um, you know, relevant news that we can all relate to, things that are important to the community that don't, no, don't normally sort of get, um, you know, coverage. Pr- coverage in mainstream media or on... Um, I mean, th- they might get coverage sort of in, in, um, in, in coffee shops and things like that. Yeah. But, I mean, there's no journalist that's behind it. There's no proper research. There's no cross-referencing. There's no quality imagery. There's no, uh, you know, this is the sort of things that we're lacking. And as a community, we need so to sort of... So much involved, isn't it? Man? Absolutely. So it sounds a lot easier than, yeah, than yeah, it is in reality. Abso- yes. Absolutely. So, so we are taking a step-by-step approach. So initially, um, we, we do have plans, inshallah, for news programs, for current affair programs, for, for all, all these sort of things that, um, that uh, you know, that can can be beneficial to the community, inshallah. Taib, uh, look, um, as a member of the community, as someone who obviously wants to be behind this and wants to support this, can I benefit from this um, in ways other than just simply being a viewer? Uh, yeah, and can, can I, let's say for instance, um, can I use this medium to advertise? Can I use this medium to put a notice up? Can, you know what I mean? Uh, like Absolutely. Can we... I mean, yes. So, is so there room for, for this? Or? Absolutely. So, what we're doing at the moment is we're actually running off donations, sponsorships, and advertising, um, and people or businesses, whether they're Islamic or non-Islamic, as long as they're sort of compliant from from an Islamic point of view. So, we won't be advertising for the local pub. I assure you about that. <laughs> but, um, but uh, Islamic businesses can can actually have now can now have, you know, television commercials. You know, they can promote their products in a way that we've never seen before. I mean, you, you can just imagine the, the potential, the possibility, um, and how much you know businesses, Islamic businesses, can actually benefit from this. Um, and it's a two-way thing. So this is really a Dawah initiative. So anyone that advertises with us, anyone that uh, sort of does a sponsorship, can actually benefit from from their product exposure, from their brand exposure, from their campaign exposure. And, and at the same time, the and at the same time, they're actually supporting Dawah. I mean, just imagine, you are supporting. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reaching masses. I mean, this is not just about a talk where you have three, four, five hundred people or even a thousand people attending. This is about hundreds of thousands of people, not even millions of people have the potential of watching this and benefiting from this. So there is, alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, potential for, for advertising. There's potential for sponsorships. And um, I mean, the, the, the thing that I'd like to give you sort of a quick rundown on is a little TV show that we're doing, putting together on Sunday night, inshallah. So to explain the concept to the community, what we've this, done... You're talking about this Sunday, this Sunday night, the 30th, 30th of, March, of March, at the Renaissance um, in Litcomb. What we're doing is we're setting up the dance floor <laughs> as a temporary studio. Right. Okay, and this is going to have the professional lighting, the professional cameras, the professional crew. That's full-on studio. Full-on studio with a professional set. We're going to have several of the panelists that we all know, Brother Muhammad Zaud, um, brother Hisham Krayam and Brother Sean McNulty as well. 
Um, there'll be the panelists on the show and they'll interview Mashiach, they'll interview some activists, they'll interview some Da'is, and we're even gonna, we, we're gonna actually show the people how, or show the community how mm. we actually make a, a live TV show. So you'll see the actual set, you'll see the interview take place, and then you'll see the final product on TV screens that will be placed around the hall as well. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. So this is really, a, a, I mean, a step up from anything that, that anyone has in the Muslim community has seen before. I mean, I want you to think of something like the project or the footy show, but from an in Islamic context. The same quality, the same engaging sort of mechanisms that they use, but something beneficial, something that people can benefit from. We're going to put on display a green screen segment, several green screen segments, which will truly bl blow you away. And, and this green screen is something where a sheikh or a scholar or someone can stand in front and they can sort of put uh, imagery behind him, motion picture behind him, and can sort of emphasize or, or sort of elaborate explanations. Yeah, because it. Vi visual cues are a lot easier to absorb. Yes. So, for instance, the Sheikh is talking about the rituals of Hajj, for instance. No. So he's got pictures of Harafah and Mina and all these things behind e exactly. him. Exactly. And he can, you know, and when people hearing about Hajj is not the same as seeing, right? Yeah. So yeah. when you see that, it, it has a bigger potential to actually reach and the hearts and minds. And we're actually doing this live as well, which is in, in terms of production, it's qu quite a difficult thing of to course, do. Yeah. But we want to show the community our ability that we are a credible um, production facility that we can produce you know, quality content, reliable content, credible content, authentic content that's engaging, that's relevant to the people that we have, to the community, the Muslim community in Australia and, and in the greater West as well. And this is really something, it's, it's going to be an hour show, um, that uh, I encourage everyone that sort of doesn't have their ticket to sort of go out there to, to get their ticket and, and sort of um, just take a look, just watch this program because it will truly blow you away. So the idea of the Sunday evening event is it's a fundraising event. Um, as you can imagine, this, um, this, a, a project like this requires enormous amounts of funds. Um, Especially to start up, right? Absolutely. And uh, alhamdulillah, I mean, we're not talking about a vision. We're not talking about an idea. We actually have it's the studio there. Yes. We have the equipment all there. We're actually using the equipment as we speak. It's being used. It's for rehearsals, etc. So everything is functional, operating, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, only with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we really want the, in, the, the community to get behind us on this, to, to understand that this is critical, this is imperative that we actually start changing you know, mentality, changing focus and, and thinking towards the future. How can I influence my children positively? Because if I don't, some, some cartoon network will. <coughs> and whether it's positive or negative, then it's, it's, uh, it's detrimental to, for my children. I mean, today you find, even in children's cartoons, I mean, things like homosexuality, is is you know is acceptable. Uh, acceptable. Yeah. Violence is something normal. You find you know rudeness you know between kids and parents and the way interaction between young people and their adults and their parents is 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 appalling. Yes. Um, so materialism is something that's glorified. I mean so all, all these all sorts of degradation are something that is accepted it's, and the it's norm. It's normalized. It's desensitized. It's all seeds. Yes. It's all seeds that get planted from yeah. Yeah. And, and then and, and then the people complain. Why is my child not listening to me? Yeah. Why is my child not you know praying why is my child not having a connection with the quran why is my child this why is my child that well it's it's people in the media have done this to your child people in the media have done this to and us with intention too it's not something that's happened by a mistake or by by you know uh, Look, absolutely and we all agree that media is very powerful and but the thing is is it's a new concept to the community i mean you, you tell people donate to a mosque they know what a mosque is you tell people donate <coughs> for you know our brothers and sisters in syria they understand the importance of the humanitarian crisis over there but when you say i mean donate to media it's a new concept to people and this is what we're trying to change this is a, the, the shift of, of understanding and the shift of mentality that we're, tr we're trying to change within the community so that we can all benefit inshallah inshallah you know look um something that that i sort of maybe just wanted to maybe just share with the community um is that uh, I think I think we sort of really need to take a step back and really understand how how big and how important media is, um, because uh, speaking to a lot of the brothers uh, throughout the week, um, you know, I have been hearing a lot of oh yeah, but you know, isn't this uh, isn't this sort of already up on YouTube? And that, don't we, don't we, don't we sort of, you know, or or, or rather, yet yeah, there's also the other argument that is to somewhat extent even a valid one that oh yeah, but look, is this? I mean, is this really how we want to share Islam? And is this really how we want to propagate it? You know, look, we we can we can we can sit here and uh, really talk about this and argue the point whether it's a yes or a no all day long. The reality is is media 
is pumping and media is growing at such a rate at such a rate and the effect of it is just phenomenal more than you and I will ever be able to grasp and understand and the reality is is when you look at it from a dawa perspective dawa is reaching to those who do not want deen that's or, one way or at the very least not aware right yeah that's one way that i look at it mm. okay that me as a dawi look it's beautiful we know that there's mosques we know that there's local talks and we know that if you want deen we'll then go to the masjid but what about those who don't go to the mosques? What about those who don't want to sit in front of Mashiach? What about those who do not want to, you know, what about those who do not want to listen? How do we get to these people? How can we reach out to them? And wallahi, media, media is the answer. <coughs> because the reality is, is millions and millions of people are spending hours and hours and hours on a daily basis. Yep. On a daily basis, you know, watching snippets and videos and this and that link and this link and, and, and right? There are people that have the TV on just for ambience in the house, uh, just because it makes them feel better, you, you know? know? And, and there's still garbage running on the TV. Yeah, yeah. So, so but, but yani, I know for myself, and I'm sure you boys can relate, that growing up, growing up um, in a country where my mum and dad spoke Arabic, right? Um, I spoke mainly English, okay? Um, I couldn't relate to a lot of the things that they were trying to share with me. Um, all of their shows were in Arabic. Um, all of the mashayikh that we knew of in the local areas were all of Arab speaking. So you would go to the masjid, you couldn't engage. You go to the you masjid. You wouldn't understand you, the thing. Right? Just, so, yeah. so, so, you know, um, so there was a massive gap. There really was a massive gap. And then when we did decide, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally opened the doors of us, you know, for us and gave us hidayah and gave us guidance, we were then hungry. And I'm sure maybe now because alhamdulillah it's been so long, but honestly brothers really, I really want you to go back with me to when we first got onto deen. How hungry were we man? We couldn't get enough. How many questions did we have? Wallahi I remember so much. And where to go? Where to go? Who to listen to? You know, um, uh, this was massive, and a lot of our problems was in that initial stage. Yes. You know, of not. You know, look, I know of one particular scholar who became a phenomenon, and he was an absolute phenomenon in the in the English speaking world. He did the Sirah of Abu Bakr and the Sirah of Omar ibn al-Khattab, and right, like, like. But this was English. People could now sit down and listen to someone who spoke their language. Allah. In their, you know, in it was so engaging. I remember, wallahi, so many times, you know, I would be coming home listening, park my car, right? Bec- but then I'd be like, no, look, I'm just going to finish this <laughs> part. Just going to finish. Wallahi, yeah, man, yeah. Like so many times I sat in my car, though it's been parked in front of me, yeah. for 40 minutes. Yes. Engaged in whatever it is that he was talking about. Now with this, Allahu Akbar, man. There is not a phone that we can't reach. There isn't a laptop that we cannot reach. There isn't a TV screen that we can't reach. The, really, it's 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 unlimited. The opportunities are phenomenal, man. You know, and and we don't have to throw turbans in their faces. You don't have to throw beads in their faces. No, we can now bring the message to them in an engaging manner. Yes, yes. in an engaging manner, man. And, you know, Muhammad, uh, you mentioned something very important. I mean, this is not a supplement for the mosque. This is not a supplement for the sheikh. This is a complement. Mm. So this is how we need to think of it. It's, it does, this does not replace da'wah in the mosque. It does not replace, you know, da'wah that's done by da'is, whether it's lectures, whether it's um, conferences, regardless which form of da'wah that they do. But this actually complements our da'wah. This, this is this another piece of the puzzle that completes the whole this is a critical piece it's a very very important piece that actually complements all the rest of all this work that we do as a yes. community in terms of dawah in terms of changing you know conceptions uh, mis- misconceptions in in mainstream media about islam i mean we have the ability getting, getting engagement from the community absolutely in, in a, in, and this is i mean a, a wonderful opportunity that we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to sort of give us a success with I mean, just on your point hablas about media and i mean all you have to do is ask your kids you know or the average kid, you know, of, of a Muslim family, to name 
you know, all the shows that are on and all the, you know, young stars that are on and, and they'll rattle them off. Uh, and, and these are the religious kids too. And these, and these are kids from relatively religious families, right? So, and then again, ask them about perhaps, you know, religious content like, you know, names of Sahaba or, or you know, um, historical um, facts and things like that. And they probably would struggle a, a lot more to do that. So, um, ask yourself that very simple, honest question and you know that the the current media that we're exposed to does have a huge impact. Whether you think so or not, it's reality. Look, it's impacted me, myself. Absolutely. You guys, all of us. Everyone, I'll be the first all of us. All of us you really, can't you deny know. that this has had an influence on our personalities, on our behavior, on the ways we interact with our parents. I mean, this is this is out there. It's it's It works. Yes. It's obvious. You know, it's so obvious. But the problem is, is that unfortunately it's taken us such a long time to realize this and, and come up with with something an alternative that with with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala work look look you know look i cannot begin to tell you how many times i've bumped into someone or someone has seen me and has come up to me and he says to me brother look you know i watched something of yours or you know look i jumped you know how many times you know how many brothers and sisters are out there that want to get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but have that fear okay and don't and don't really have the courage or don't really, you know, have it in them to sort of come and see a religious person or, or, or to, you know, so many brothers have told me that, you know, look, I felt lost and I felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love me anymore. And I felt that, you know, for myself that there is no more hope. And then I'll be like, okay, so what is it that you did? And he'll be like, you know, look, I jumped onto YouTube and I typed in, you know, Islam, repentance, Islam, forgiveness, you know, the, the, this is the thousands of people, Absolutely. thousands of people, man. You know, so 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 now to have something that is a complete package that not only is engaging, not only is it interactive, but people can follow through. I can follow through. Yeah, and I can, you know, you know, I can fall in love with their personality and then track this person down and 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 really know what is happening here. So it's not, you know, it's not just a one-off. You'll never know about this person. No, this is. You know, it's a it's complete a package. Thing, you know, yeah. it's a continuous, uh, yeah, engagement. Yeah. Yes, and, and if, if, okay, if I can mention a very quick story. Last year we were in Egypt, um, Hamad, uh, yeah. as, as you know. Um, some uh, we were in the mosque, and one of the messages they were there, and someone heard us speak in English. He came and approached us, and he was from Norway, and he found out that we're from Australia, and he's like, "Do you know Sheikh Shadi? You know Sheikh Shadi?" So like, yeah. How many times did that happen? And then we're like, "Yeah, of course we know him." He's like. He's, he was one of the reasons that I accepted Islam. Now, Sheikh Shadi did not know this. The brothers that run the Islamic media productions that, that you know on, on YouTube and that channel did not know this. But look at the reach. I mean, look at the influence that this just a simple video has. Imagine if we can actually see this in a... In and this a is again, of what you know, because you became aware of it. So how about all those things you don't know absolutely. about? Absolutely. I mean, we all know that this is very, very influential, and we need to take it seriously. We need to take media seriously. We need to start thinking differently as a community, inshallah. I've even heard of uh, brothers um, in a mosque. I forgot which country it was. It was in Southeast Asian country. And every, I think, maybe Thursday night, they would get together in the mosque and put on... Uh, a YouTube video of a particular sheikh here in, 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 I don't know, I forgot if it was Sheikh Shadi or someone else. They used to put on a video of, of them at the mosque. Yeah. And all the, you know, like we have lectures here, but they didn't have anyone to give lectures. So they used to put the YouTube videos. So imagine they have a TV station, which they, this one, could you know, easily look, access, right? Look, look, honestly, for me, one of the biggest things that I see with a project like this is sometimes we look at results and we want results now. Yeah. We want instant effect now. But really, my brothers and sisters, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his job was to spread deen to what? To every corner. Yes. Okay? To all four corners of the world. But he died, and Islam hadn't left Mecca and Medina. But when he died, he had planted enough seeds. He set the platform. He set the platform, and he was content. He knew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that I have now left men behind who have understood their responsibility, they have understood my mission, and they know what is now upon them. Rasulullah was promising them the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire, right? And the Roman Empire, and they were digging their trench while they were being attacked. <laughs> you know? So, yes, maybe, maybe, maybe you and I, but we will. But maybe you and I will not see the full, the full picture of this project. Or, or the fruits see the. But if we establish this now, if we lay down that platform for them now, Allahu Akbar, imagine, imagine what they can do with this. 
Well, I guess we have to ask ourselves the question, are we willing to be of those that miss out on this opportunity to be the pioneers? And there really is a, a pioneering venture yeah. into, you know, a, in Australia to do something like that. Milaz, one, one question I had, um, and it probably is a question that will pop up, um, you know, inevitably. Um, this particular project, is it, uh, is it a project as such for the community, by the community, or is it a business venture as such? Sure. Um, the current operation that we have, we, we're running as a, operating as a non-for-profit organization, so no one will personally benefit from this um, project. Any money that we have at the end of the year will be pumped back into our programs. Yes. We'll be able to do more productions, more content, higher quality, um, etc. So, so no one will personally benefit from this. Um, we are looking at employing a, a complete sort of workforce um, yeah, of professionals. It's not going to run itself, right? Absolutely. So, so we will employ professionals that are, you know, dedicated uh, cameramen, editing, you know, with editing suites, um, you know, production people, producers, talent, etc. Um, so we do have a plan to have a, a sustainable sort of model, inshallah, that uh, can sort of see us into the future as well. SubhanAllah. I mean, it's, um, it's a fantastic initiative to say the least. Um, I think, uh, look, sorry, Annie, if, if I, I think we can talk all night long, but, you know, if you really want to know what this is about, I really urge all the brothers and sisters to be there this Friday night. Saturday, fr- Sunday night. Sun- sorry. Sunday night. Sorry, sorry. So, what's, uh, so, so Sunday the 30th of March, inshallah, right? the Renaissance, um, Litkum. Um, so seven that's New Street, uh, New Street, Street correct. And this um, is this is a seven thirty start. And with this event, I like your the flyer says, if you're late, we won't wait. Exactly. So if you're late, we won't wait. We it's are. It's a TV station. It's not. Absolutely. We're not. We're not doing a little uh, hot dog uh, stall uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, come get your hot dogs. Absolutely. So we want people to come in early. We want um, people to sort of enjoy the show. So there's going to be a, you know a, a very long show. It's going to be an hour show. Um, you know, complete with um, with 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 everything that you would expect from a high quality TV production, a live TV production. Um, the other thing that we uh, we should mention as well that there is a hall for the sisters on the night as well. And they will be able to watch the production on TV screens. So they'll be able to watch the complete show um, through TV screens. And they have a few different activities, um, you know, with, with photographers and a few different competitions as well. Um, just you can have a look at the Facebook page for more details um, on that, inshallah. What's the Facebook page? Sorry. One Path Network. One Path Network. One Path Network. And if you have any, if there's any information or people would like to get in contact with us, they can do so on admin at onepathnetwork.com. That's admin at onepathnetwork.com. We also have a Facebook page that has several videos of, um, you know, of the Mashaykh in Sydney that uh, are behind this project as well. There's a lot of support I've, n- I've noticed already. A lot of the prominent people that are very active in the community have already put their support behind this because I guess they realize how important and how vital this is to our community. Absolutely. So this is a very, very important initiative for the community to stand behind. Um, it's a very important initiative for us to sort of uh, consider something as serious, not just as, you know, oh, I can watch TV for free on, on Channel 7. Why do I have to yep. contribute to this sort of stuff? And th- the idea is that we all the content that we produce is going to be free to watch. So we're not selling DVDs or having subscriptions where people have to pay for this. No, no, we will make sure that every single access medium that we develop is actually free of charge, yeah. accessible to everyone around the world, inshallah. Well, one thing I did pick up actually back on that point is the there's the, a bit of a promo video that was put together for this and the selection of mashayikh that are in that is actually a beautiful cross section of our community already. I mean, just looking at the people that are involved in it, it's just a, it gives you the sense and the, the appreciation that you have put a lot of thought into engaging those that are you know you know those and more that are actually part of you know vital part of the community. Um, we will be putting the um, the flyers, inshallah, on the on the uh, on our Facebook page, inshallah. Um, but is there any anything else, Malaz, before before you have to go? Um, I just would like to people, uh, you know, for our brothers and sisters that are listening out there, to to really have a think about the importance of this and as as a project, as an initiative, and to really get behind behind us on this on this initiative. I mean, um, it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort to do something that's quality. Um, you know, this is this can reach millions of people around the world. This, we're not talking about an event that can sort of reach, you know, a thousand people max. We are talking about something that can be there 
um, you know, forever and ever people can benefit from. I mean, every single, you know, production can be beneficial to people. This is relevant to the Islamic context, to Australian sort of uh, ge geography as well, or people in the West as well. So we really want people to sort of start shifting focus, ch start changing mentality, the way we think about priorities. Yep. Um, and, and really realizing that media is a very strong influencer of ideas, thoughts, and, and, and personalities. And we need to really start thinking how we can engage our youth, our children, and future generations so that we can have Muslims that can really show people the mercy of Islam. That we can have Muslims, you know, generations of Muslims that can show people about the, the rahmah of Islam and the mercy of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and the, the beautiful thing about this religion that we sort of uh, hold as sacred, inshallah. Another thing I probably, I, I know... Knowing the people that are involved in this, I know that um, quality is a very big factor. So it's not just you know we need to shift away from this um, from this mentality of you know close enough is good enough or or just putting in the bare minimum. You know we always complain about a lot of things. We're very good at, complain, at complaining as a community, but we need to we need to actually get behind projects that offer good quality well, stuff. I mean, look, you know, and it doesn't come it doesn't come really, without effort. How many times has something like this, has a project like this, come up over dinner? Many so many times. Many times. Ideas are how mad would it be if you had an app that did this and did that? Yeah. And how mad would it be, you know, if we had our own this? And well, how mad would it be that it's there now, and we just need your support? Man. Yes, yes, you Subhanallah. Know? So. Again, if people want to see how this is, you know, again, easy to, you know, it's one thing hearing about it, but to see it live, judge it for yourself, and uh, actually see the effort and the quality behind the entire project. Um, I guess there's no really other way to do this other than show up on Sunday night and 7:30 at the Renaissance in Litcom. And sure, and make uh, make sure you have your tickets um, before you show up, so that there is a limited number of tickets uh, that yes. are still available. So um, do visit the website um, onepathnetwork.com. Or our That's Facebook. One word, right? OnePathNetwork.com. One word. And our Facebook page, OnePathNetwork.com as well, that has a lot of links to a few different things as well, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, well, Mr. Malaz, Jazakallah Khair for um, uh, joining us today. I know you're extremely busy and you have to rush off right now anyway to sort of go back to the studio and um, and do a lot of work to sort of get everything ready. And uh, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it easy for you, to reward you for your efforts and your intention and all the brothers and sisters involved as well inshallah and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless this project and make it successful inshallah and, and again as Prophet Sallam said even if one person wants to be guided by what you and the team put out there then this is better than you know, the whole world and any, everything it contains inshallah. One Path Network everyone's invited <laughs> <laughs> Peace <laughs> Thank you very much. I miss you. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I just miss you. Uh, the, the, the feelings with you, Yala. Um, Mezin, it's always a pleasure to be, you know, to have the honor to come and sit in front Allah of you. Allah so, Allah so. Allah. Look, I'm thinking, Allahu Alam, maybe, uh, maybe we should get a table and have the whole Dean team there. So yes, what do you yes, I think so. We should have. I mean, we should be. We should have in the whole segment, to be honest. Anyway. Yeah, so. look, we're not gonna push him now, right? Yes, he's, yes. He's <laughs> <laughs> but definitely the next time around, yeah, for sure. Subhanallah. Well, brothers and sisters, um, it's time for Hisha uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, and Charlie, if you enjoyed the Dean team uh, show tonight, talking about a very, very important. Um, a very, very important um, project and initiative, uh, one that I have to say we can't afford to miss out on and not be a part of. Um, we always complain about you know things that aren't happening, and when something does happen such as this, which is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I have to say, then we should really get behind these projects and support the projects and make the most of it. So with that, inshallah, again, we'll put the details up on our Facebook page. That's the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program. Um, we'll put up the flyers. And uh, if you have any questions, obviously go to the One Path Network, guys, or even we'll be happy to answer them for you as well. Buy your tickets for Sunday. Do not miss out, inshallah. Uh, and with that, I'll leave you, inshallah, until next week. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.